Hi everyone. Oops. See if we can put you down a little further here. And not trip over my skirts. I don't have this hemmed very well. Hello everyone, it's Maureen. The jingling that you're hearing is some badges I have on my belt. I wanted to show you what an outfit that I wear for the SCA looks like. The layers and sort of the specific general look. Um, to start with, this is one of my new Tudor shirts. I don't have any of the hooks and eyes on it at this particular point. But I figured that this would be a great opportunity to show you what it looks like with the ensemble. This happens to be a yellow linen dress that I made. Linen was used more for underclothes than it was for overclothes, but because I live in a much warmer climate, I'm doing more of a combination of wools and linens to try to keep cool. Uh, for myself particularly, I am very heat sensitive, so I do have to take that into consideration for the materials that I make my clothing out of. So I have a, it's a yellow linen dress with like three quarter sleeves. So what I do is I normally will tuck the sleeves into another outer sleeve. This is a black linen sleeve that just pins at the shoulder. My first layer is the shirt though. No other, nothing else other, other than that. And a pair of socks. And today I just happen to be wearing a pair of I don't know. There you go. You can kind of see them there. Um, just to kind of have something fun about the outfit. There was actually wooden clogs used in England basically as an overshoe to protect your nice other shoes. So they did sort of have a, a clog at that time. So I'm also using them as a way of lifting myself up and not being directly on the floor. So that kind of helps. So after the socks and the shirt, so to speak, then I basically have my dress that I put on. This one is a little, I need to redo the hooks and eyes in the front, or I may do lacing where I just lace it up in, instead of the hooks and eyes because it's creating some gapping going on here. Um, regardless of how snug I wear it at this particular time, because it is a little snug more than what I would wear it, but gaining weight, these things do happen. Gaining and losing weight certainly happens. So I made the sleeves sort of interchangeable more than anything else where you could wear them with different outfits. And I do have hooks and eyes on the top of them. If a garment doesn't have the hooks and eyes, I just tuck it in and pin it at the shoulders instead, which is very period. So after the dress, I decided to put a wool skirt over top. So this just happens to be a nice wool skirt. It is actually a lot shorter than the dress. So I normally wear it underneath to create fullness as a petticoat. It also creates warmth, but with it also being wool, it does wick. So um, I guess you could say I'm gonna need to find some more tropical weight wools in my travels. And then on top of that, I have a wool apron. This seems to be a greenish black. So when we talk about true black, like that, and then you're seeing this, this is more like a grayish greenish black. So uh, wool and dyeing definitely takes on a different sort of context when you're looking at the shades that you can come up with. They could get a, a very, um, a, a decent black back then, but it'd probably be something a little bit more like this. You also hear about poor black where it ends up being a bit more brown. Um, black can also end up looking a bit more green or a bit more blue, depending on what was mixed with it to end up showing the differences. I had some skirt hooks, but they didn't seem to want to stay in place today. But normally I would hitch up the back of my dress a little bit like this. Uh, to move around a bit more. Actually, I can show you that process. 
Now I don't have pockets in this dress, but what I do have are wool pouches that were created. I bought these and they come in quite handy because you can store a lot of things in it, but granted you would also run into the pickpocket situation too. But let me just pull this out. So in my pouches, this one has a little bit of jewelry in it. And it also had my skirt hooks on a linen, on a linen piece of tape. This is what they call a 18th century women's wallet. I use it as a sort of a, a keeper of sewing items and small implements. So I keep that in this pouch and it's just the right length. Some of the other jewelry items I'll probably have to move to a different pouch at some point, but they're in the bottom here. So that's that. In this particular pouch, this is the one I use the most. I normally keep my cell phone in here. I am getting a girdle book actually that is meant to hold a cell phone. One of the things we do in the Society for Creative Anachronism is we hide the modern in a creative or medieval way. So this is going to be a leather book that is going to hold my cell phone in, in place. So I could pull that book off of my belt. I could be looking at my book and scrolling or something of this nature, but someone coming and looking at me might be thinking I'm reading a book instead of looking at my phone. So one way to hide the modern in a medieval way. So that's gonna be coming as of yet. But one of the other things that I had purchased is a writable sort of item here. This is normally used in the 18th century as well. It has a graphite pencil with it and I can write a quick list and it also holds the pencil in place. I'm sure a quick writing instrument like this would have been very handy at the time. I mean, I could probably pull out my girdle book with my phone and write a list as well, but sometimes having a physical item like this is very helpful. I have my prayer beads, sometimes known as a paternoster. So I have that in here which is coral with pearls and a little silk tassel. So. so that is also in this pouch. And then I also have this nice little handmade book that was a gift from when I first started in SCA and I did my first arts and sciences display. It's made of leather, it's stamped with little fleur-de-lis, is green. And I have my name and information I put in the front and most of it is pretty much blank at this point. So I haven't written anything in it as of yet, but I do have the graphite pencil from the other item in here that if I needed to write something in my book, I have a pencil. So that's this pouch. And this was made and I purchased this from, from a friend. And it's lined also in like a mustard linen, which not just this particular dress, but is very quite nicely made. This is another wool pouch. This one has most of my other jewelry in here. So I have an extra pin if I needed to pin something up. It's got little shamrocks on it. Another brooch. other awards brooches and then I have a necklace and earrings in here as well if I was doing let's say a um, low noble that's a sort of the typical jewelry kit that I wear let's see so I showed what was in the green one let's see and there's I only have a few pouches. I only have two orange and one green. This one actually has actually a needle book 
couple of pins that's been stitched and a pair of snips, a pair of, of stork scissors. That's about it for this one. So it's good to have pins and a little bit of a needle and thread on you in case you should have a minor wardrobe malfunction. So keeping a little sewing kit in one of your pouches is always a great idea. Now this is what was making noise earlier. These are pewter badges that were made for many different events. And then these are my Pensick tokens. I haven't been to too many Pensicks. I know some people have but I have my Pensic tokens also hanging there. They're, they are what primarily makes the noise when I'm, when I'm moving or, or walking around. I did have a bell on the bottom of this, but I took it off because it was making all sorts of noise in a uh, people could hear you coming kind of way, as if they wouldn't hear, me, hear with the uh, Pensic tags. But basically I have hooks and then these are sharp on the other end so you do want to be careful so what you can do is put the skirt you can either hike the skirt or put the pins in first what I like to do is put the pins in first and I have a bit of a linen belt that I am using those in. It ideally is better to put it into wool if you can because the you can accidentally sort of slice your your linen as compared to your wool. Basically I'm taking a wad of the back of the skirt and hiking it up so it makes it easier for me to walk and maneuver. And if I needed more in the front, I just take more skirt from the sides and put it into this piece right here. So then it's lifted my skirts enough that I can walk without needing to lift them or move anything. I still have all of my pouches available to access despite the, the ruffling. Think of it sort of as a Tudor bum roll. That's kind of, well, Tudor bustle, because you're, you're kind of bustling up your skirts a little bit in the back to pull up length. And this is probably a little bit short, but you get the idea, a little bit short, but it, it pulls up the length enough that you can walk around without having to lift your skirts. Also ideal if you were, let's say, running around somewhere where it was very dirty. And in the Tudor times there were open sewers, so you don't want your skirts in any of that since they were floor length most of the time. So hiking them up and protecting your hems, always a great idea. So you'll see this sort of regularly in very various different uh, dresses for me, my skirt hooks normally are right up in the front here. They don't come all the way around. That length is not all that long, but it's just enough to create the tension to hook into your wool and hold it into place. Now, if you notice here, I have an apron, but this apron isn't linen. You do see a lot of images in Tudor time frame that do show a linen apron, but or a white apron of some form, but was it necessarily linen? Linen, unfortunately, has a problem of catching fire. And in the Tudor time frame, you run into a lot of fire, unfortunately. It was the means in which you kept your house warm. And because of that, it makes it a bit more challenging to Let's say if you were trying to keep your shirts clean, but you're getting soot all over yourself, it makes it challenging keeping your white linens white. But also if you should 
catch an ember on it, it would try to catch fire. So main bodies of clothing normally weren't made of linen. I'm using a linen dress and many of my summer items are, are linen because I need to keep cool. They may have worn a lighter weight wool of some form. Sometimes you hear it called tropical weight wool. Um, they would have wore wool for their, their outer and what happens with aprons like this that are wool, if an ember should catch uh, onto your wool apron, it'll put itself out. So this is a much safer thing to be wearing while going around the fire is a wool apron. I had enough material, I made a corresponding partlet to go with it. Kind of give you an idea. Nobody gets to see the back, so there you go. That's kind of what the back looks like. And then it also lets me show off that pretty yellow linen. It's very nice. And I have to say, can't necessarily beat yellow and black. You look like a pretty bee. But this is sort of what an example of one of the many kinds of outfits that I've created over the years. And I even have a few nearby. So I have several kirtles made out of basic materials. Now these are ones I made very quickly for Pensick. This is made out of cotton canvas, so it is a little heavy, but it's very supportive. I didn't even put hooks and eyes. I just sew myself into this particular one. Um, I could also put in loops to lace myself in, which probably will happen eventually. So a orange and a bright yellow combination. I really kind of consider something like that nicely for summer. And here's a linen one that I created with linen colored striping at the bottom. It has tabs and such. This is really meant to be a summer layer as well. And it's quite, uh, it's interlined, it's fairly supportive. And I haven't put any closures in the front yet, but I will be putting in lace, lace closures for it eventually. And here are a few of the wool garments that I have created. I have, this is a shorter bodice. I try to make them about where the belly button goes as far as the bodice ending. This one's a little shorter than that, but it's made out of a twill fabric. I've sewn in the sleeves, but yet again, it could be like this where they would be removable. You don't necessarily have to sew them in unless you want to. And then I just used some yarn, created striping on the skirt. It's actually quite a comfortable one. And I put in some twill tape to protect the inside of the bodice. It's not a bad little trick, it certainly helps. And here is a gray one. I had some permanent sleeves on this, but decided to change them out. I have some tabs along the side kind of gives a nice flare. And then when I'm wearing a belt like this, with this, I ha it tucks over and creates this nice little peplum with it. So it's a gray. I don't have any striping on the bottom of that. You can do the striping if you like. It's a nice little feature that pulls color downwards. So those are my main two wool dresses. This one, was more of that orange cotton canvas and then a orange textured fabric for the top. This one's really comfy. This is one of my favorite Penzik dresses. Yet again, could be sewn into this. And because they're adjustable in the front, they actually are very comfortable with being able to, when you're changing size a little bit. The waist is where it kind of gets you in these. Luckily, with a firm support, even if you've gotten a little bigger up top, typically they will flatten out into a nice rounded shape. This is the dress that you would see me in most often. This is somebody else's uh, UFO project that I bought. 
it's the right size. The skirt, unfortunately, was not pleated properly. So I ended up taking the skirt off of this linen dress, which has nice little guards on the sleeves all the way around on either side. And it's a head, this is a very heavy linen. So see what I mean? And it does have a guard on the bottom of the skirt, which matches the lining color, which is, this is all linen construction. I was very pleased when I purchased this UFO from its original owner. And I just resized my hooks and eyes to the right length for, for my measurements. And the beautiful thing about a dress like this is I can put a set of dark sleeves with it. I could do another set of different color purple sleeves. My heraldic colors in the SCA tend to be like a purple, green, yellow, and white. So this is one of those situations where it worked for, for that particular purpose. And then this one is more like a noble kind of outfit, so to speak. So this one, yet again, you could be sewn into it. I put trim all the way around on this particular one. And then you have this wonderful herring, herringbone wool set in sleeve. And then also, same situation, you have a different color lining, but when I have any kind of belt with items, the peplum, or guards in this case, end up hiding that and giving it a little bit of texture and structure. So this is all linen. This is made out of the same kind of linen as these sleeves. The trick with planning an outfit, if you can make it as interchangeable as possible, you are going to look like you have more clothing. So if you have more kirtles like this, they either have guards and no set in sleeves, and you can just change out the sleeves, you're going to look like you have more, more clothing. slowly putting them back into their tote over here. When I know I'm going to an event, normally the day or two before, I don't throw everything into the car and go. Because tutors would not, tutor people would have wanted to put their best foot forward. They wouldn't have wanted to look wrinkled or disheveled or unorganized. So if I pull a wool dress, I will steam the dress the night before with in the bathroom, hang this on the back of the door on a hanger, and try to get the wrinkles out of it as much as possible before putting it on and going to an event. Same thing with the linen ones. I will give them a good press the night before, hang everything up, and make sure it's ready to go. So. That is one thing you want to take into consideration when you are planning your outfits, what they're made of, is being able to care for them properly, but also being able to make them last because you are, use, you are using fabric and you want to make sure that for the money you're spending for your fabric that you're getting to wear it for a very long time. So that's a general look at some of the kirtles that I currently have. I am creating some new ones to fit my size right now. Luckily, it seems that with the way that a lot of clothing was patterned from back then, changing in size was one of the things that they could accommodate for, especially for women because pregnancy changed your size dramatically over many multiple pregnancies if that was something that happened. And it's something that I know should happen to me, 
there are ways of accommodating for it and making your clothing work for you. And that's the essence of a Tudor style outfit. The clothing works for you, it's versatile. It allows you to do what you need to do. More so in a middle to lower class. I'm working, I can go run around and do whatever I need to do as I am. Um, I do a little bit of like a, a noble bent on some of my clothing, like the one, the black and the white edged item. It's more of a like a middling, middling class kind of outfit. But I really hope that you enjoyed this look at my clothing and such. If you should have any questions about the layers, um, how it works, how one moves in it, I will give you another spin because, yay. It's nice, honestly, to be in garb again. It's, it's been too long. And this was also helping me figure out what I'm gonna be wearing next weekend when I do a demo. So I had to make sure everything fit. So this was a perfect test run for that too. If you should have questions about the SCA, about my clothing, the era that I portray, and about any of the individual pieces, what they're made of and why, please leave a comment or a question in the comments. My email is also in the about section if you didn't want it necessarily out for everybody to read. You can always email me and contact me that way. And if you enjoy this video, please consider liking and possibly subscribing. I upload every other Friday and <clears throat> we have fun with history here. So, bye.